Microplastic. Hello everyone, I hope you are doing alright. Welcome back to my channel and my new video. With the UN Environment Assembly about plastic waste held this week in Nairobi, I wanted to pick up on an aspect of the topic that is often discussed in cosmetics microplastics. So if you've been following me for a while here on YouTube or on Instagram, you know I've been interested in a healthy lifestyle and especially safe ingredients for a long time now. The entire topic of waste and with this plastic waste is however something I have been looking into in more detail for a bit more than a year now. At that time I met during my visit at the Vivanas in Nuremberg the author of the blog Wastes End. As you might guess from her blog's name she lives zero waste. What she's blogging about is super inspiring. I myself am miles away from this lifestyle and I'm not even sure if I will ever get to this point. However, I really admire her dedication and her discipline she puts into this. If you are interested in this topic and would like to get some inspiration, I'll leave a link for you in the info box below. So today I would like to have together with you a closer look and explain in simple language what is microplastic and why this topic is so important. Last summer, the Fraunhofer Institute, a German research society, has published a study about this topic. Now, the study is in German language, but if I find something about this in English, I will link this along with the original for you below. The study defines microplastic in two major categories in primary microplastics and secondary microplastics. It further breaks down primary microplastic in type A and type B. Primary microplastic type A arises when producing a product. Examples for this are cosmetics with microbeads, industrial blazing abrasive, 3D printing and plastic pellets. Primary microplastic type B only arises during use. That would be abrasion wear of tires, synthetic fibers released from textiles during washing or weathering of colors. Secondary microplastic is caused by larger pieces of plastic, so-called macroplastic, which have been released into the environment, for example, by illegal waste disposal or littering, and are now being broken down into smaller pieces of plastic. Whilst microplastic emissions into the environment can be intentional, as for example microbeads in cosmetics, so microplastic type A, the emission of microplastic type B is unintentional and quite hard to avoid, so some technical innovation will be needed here. Emissions of secondary microplastic are at least avoidable and can be everyone's personal responsibility as well as the responsibility of governments and public bodies to provide recycling facilities and proper waste management. So far so good defining the types of microplastic but let's now take a closer look at what are the actual biggest sources of microplastics. <laughs> Besides microplastics in cosmetics, like microbeads, I was aware of the problem of synthetic fibers washing out of textiles and reaching the environment through wastewater. I have spoken already about this in a short guest contribution to the blog The Girl in the Ocean. I'll also link this blog in the video's description box for you. So I was quite surprised what the study named as the top 10 sources of microplastic in the environment, which are abrasion of tires, emissions during waste disposal, abrasion of asphalt, pallet losses, emissions of sports and playgrounds, release on construction sites, abrasion of shoe soles, abrasion of plastic packaging, abrasion of road markings, as well as fiber abrasion in textile washing. Microplastic from cosmetics such as microbeads, however, comes only place 17 in the study. Most of the microplastic emissions come from abrasion and are an unintended release. This does mean now that bans of microplastic in cosmetics and other products do only solve a smaller part of the problem. It needs to be done more because this is such an important topic. Okay, but why is that such a big deal now? It is a big deal because we have no idea where this will lead. Currently, we can only prove the existence of microplastic in our food, in the human body. What it does to our bodies is not yet sufficiently researched. So we could one day wake up and realize 
we have a massive problem. What if there are accumulation effects in the body? There are indications in muscles that microplastics affect their immune system, their fertility and mortality. Also, the problem is not limited to the microplastic particles, but also to additives and fillers which are in those plastics. Plasticizers like phthalates and bisphenol. Such substances are known to be harmful. Research shows they can cause cardiovascular disease, hormonal changes and obesity. When plastic enters the environment and gets further and further broken down, these harmful substances enter the environment as well. As long as all these issues are on the plate, I think we cannot afford to keep emitting plastic into the environment as we do currently. It is also not clear how long it takes for plastic to break down fully in the environment. The study has estimated it could take for some substances up to 2000 years. 2000 years, think about it. This is a heritage we're potentially not only leaving to our children and grandchildren, but to many, many generations to come. Already now, microplastics are in the sea, soil, in many foods, such as seafood, honey, salt, beer, in drinking water. And an Austrian study from last year in October found microplastic in human feces. For those reasons, I think this topic is so important that it needs to be discussed and actions need to be taken. With this video, I would like to invite you to join this effort. I am interested to know what you personally do to prevent plastic pollution. Or do you have suggestions on what could be done, for example, on a political level? The EU Parliament has voted last year to ban microbeads in cosmetics by 2020. What do you think? Is this enough? What other notions would you consider useful? More recycling? Reducing consumption? Taxes? Bans? Or self-commitment of the industry? Our responsibility as consumers is one thing. For us as individuals, it's an easy step not to litter. Responsibility of corporates for the products they market is a different story. They need to do more as well. As long as there are companies who produce products that do emit microplastic, like in cosmetics, or as long as innovation is needed to prevent products from emitting microplastic through wear and tear, we as consumers can and have to get involved. We can vote with our dollar and show those companies what products we want. I know this is not always easy and not in every single aspect of our lives feasible, but I want to encourage you to look at the products you are using past the cosmetics and personal care space. For example, paint. The study found that a lot of microplastic is from weathering paint. So if you own a house and you have the discretion to decide what paint to use, then take a look what's in the paint. Check out whether there is a more environmentally friendly alternative out there. What I'm trying to say is what goes around comes around. It is in vain to look after our nutrition to eat only organic food to only use safe cosmetics with safe ingredients if we then, through emitting microplastic in the environment, poison ourselves with the agricultural produce and the drinking water when this microplastic comes back to us. So I think I made it back with my argument to cosmetics and I hope I could encourage you to look a little bit further than that as well. It was really difficult today to keep it short with this topic and I'm very proud of myself that I nearly managed. If not for the video itself, I think I earned that thumbs up for this, right? There is so, so much more to say to this topic, so I could not possibly incorporate everything in this video. So let me know in the comments box below if you would like to hear more from me about this topic. And don't forget to subscribe and click that little bell icon so you get notified about any further videos. Next, blah, blah, blah. Primary micro... Primary micro... Microplastic. Micro plastic. Microplastic. Plasticizers like sea soil. Sea soil. Sea soil.